What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy, and this is more One Piece, episodes 43 and 44, the end of the Arlong Park arc. But I don't think the end of Arlong. I feel like he's going to stick around and be a villain later on again, some point down the line, the same way I think Buggy will. But uh, you might notice I'm wearing this sick One Piece shirt. It's soft. It's cool. It's from Atsuko. Uh, this is not technically a sponsorship, uh, but I want to be honest about the fact that uh, somebody came up to me while I was at their booth looking at this stuff. It was like, hey, I like your One Piece reactions. And uh, the guy from the company I was talking to was like, hey, I'll give you a discount because uh, you do reactions. And so I did get a discount on this, uh, but I would have purchased it anyway, along with the other stuff you might have seen in my Atsuko little mini haul I posted as a short on this channel. Go check that out if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, I am clearly in. This This has won me over. If the episodes beforehand didn't, and they did, uh, episode 37 would have. Uh, it's one of my favorite anime episodes ever. Uh, one of my favorite TV episodes ever. I think that that, uh, that moment is so freaking good with Nami, and I just love it. So I'm excited to watch the end of the Arlong Park. The Arlong Park. I'm excited to watch the end of the Arlong Park arc with you right now. Uh, but if you want to watch the full-length reaction, you want to go through the whole episode with me, go over to patreon.com slash nerdynightly because that's where we post those. But if you don't want to do that, stay here because you're already here. And we're about to watch Arlong get his dumb sawtooth face punched in because he deserves it because he's a bad person. And I'm excited to watch him be in pain if I'm being completely honest. One Piece! How we doing, chat? How's everybody? We're back. We're back in the room. We're back recording. All right, here we go. The best word. Someone else is by your rhythm. Pretend it isn't there. Ba do 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 do. This is all the cardio I get in the week is just watching One Piece and dancing to this song. Do you wanna be my friend? We are, we are on the cruise. We are. Not looking, I'm still not looking at the titles. I'm looking at you, Jackson. How you doing, Jackson? You good? How's the new job? If your name's Jackson, comment down below. I'm actually, like, honestly surprised that fishmen aren't better at drawing charts, considering they can, like, navigate the bottom of the ocean, know exactly how deep the depths are. I do appreciate that Arlong knows that good intelligence is the most important thing. Like, you can be as strong as you want, but you need intelligence. I appreciate that about him. The pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> what? Has Luffy been using one of those, like, grip things? Just religiously while they're in the ocean? <laughs> One thing I love about the way they move the camera on Arlong is they have to change the angle of his nose for the angle of the camera. So sometimes his nose is up a little bit and sometimes it's down, depending on like where it is best visible. Screw it. She's never going to draw for you again, Arlong. Luffy's all about metaphors. Hmm. She knows what's up. Nami knows. Oh. Luffy? Luffy, punch that man. I don't care where, just do it hard. Arigato. She knows. That's so fucking sweet. 
I love the shot of Nojiko getting to see that. <laughs> oh my god! What a cut! Holy shit, I did not expect that. <laughs> oh god, this arc made me cry one more time. The sound design of that? Oh, 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 <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I knocked down the building, but I'm still in the building. I do love that Luffy buries Arlong in the, like, weight of his own ambition. Nice musical moment. The way the the theme pulled in there, that was sick. His chest. Oof. As if Zoro wasn't in enough pain. Luffy. He's probably just in there sleeping, right? Oh no, he's up. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go. That that was pretty sick. <laughs> oh, Sanji, please change. Some characters I say never change, but Sanji, you, you can change. That, he's very hurt. I would not throw him up. Like, he is bleeding from so many bite marks on his neck and abdomen and stomach. <laughs> he did not, in fact, take care of things quicker. In fact, the pacing of the anime got worse around 300 episodes later. According to, you know, all the comments I get on these videos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, these idiots. I forgot about Ratface. <laughs> That's right, Zoro. He deserved that. I really do believe that he Arigato deserved that. Arigato Nami. It's okay. I'll put it in one hand. You got it? 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 Yeah, how do they like protect this island from him after they leave? Because the problem with the Marines being this shady is the... How do you protect this place forever, you know? Hmm. <laughs> At least if they're focused on getting revenge on Luffy, they'll follow him away from this island. <laughs> they definitely spent their animation budget on the previous few episodes fighting Arlong. And this is like, image. 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 Are we about to get like, a full recap of everything that we just watched in this arc? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is this just the Arlong Park Arc Mega Mix? So, so Hi. <laughs> the, wow, we didn't have enough plot to get a whole episode in, so we'll just reuse some shots. 
tell the story again. Did he grow whiskers because he ended up at this base, or did they build this base after he became the colonel? The fuck is that? Oh, Luffy's gonna love that. They have faxes and telephones that are... <laughs> <laughs> Their telephones are snails? <laughs> the telephones are so funny. <laughs> I, I really did not expect that. <laughs> And the, the snail on the other end, like, talking. Wow. That was something else. That was very shocking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it took me out. <laughs> I was, like, really invested in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to calm down. <laughs> they, they just have such funny little mouths. Um, yeah, look, that episode had a lot of, like, not important animation in it, which is fine. I think it's kind of weird to, like, put an, a, a, that much of that in a climax episode, like this one. Um, but the, the when it wasn't that, when it was the actual fight itself... Um, and Nami's memories of that room, and, and Luffy winning against Arlong by showing Nami that he understands her, right? Like, this episode ultimately isn't about beating Arlong. It is about Luffy showing Nami that he has paid attention to her, right? And that he has empathetically understood her needs and her desires for life. That makes him a good captain to her right that makes him a worthwhile friend to her in a way that Arlong is using her and, and he uses that language right and we've been talking about these reactions about pitting the captains that Luffy fights against him ideologically and I, I think that the Arlong is very much more similar to Kuro whereas I think previously the captains all kind of stood on their own in terms of what they were the foil for Luffy in he and Kuro have a lot in common in terms of their ability their desire to use people, their somewhat um, lack of care for the people underneath them. Obviously, Arlong cares a little bit more for his crewmates uh, than Kuro obviously did. But the pitting Luffy against Arlong's ideology in this scene and having it come from Nami's perspective of seeing the shackles that have been placed upon her, not literally, but metaphorically by that room and by her job and, and by her deal with uh, Arlong over Kokoyashi having him destroy those shackles while she watches and while she understands the value of the action in a way that nobody else in the scene ha can, right? In all of those shots of her, there's always people behind her and they're watching and they're scared for Luffy and they're hopeful that Luffy's going to win, but they don't actually understand because it is a message from one person to another person that it's basically like a secret code, right? The reason why Luffy's doing this is for Nami's sake. And she gets that immediately because she realizes like, this boy is here for me, not not to not to use me and not to control me, but because he cares about me. And I think that that was so unbelievably effective. I think that it, yes, obviously we get a good fight moment where Luffy takes the hit to crack Arlong in the ribs, right? But more important than that is the emotional arc that Nami goes through between, you know, this whole arc, really, Arlong Park, and, and kind of the show up until now. But really these last few episodes and... What Luffy shows her here is just really, it's its really beautiful stuff. It's so character driven and it, it shows that yes, Luffy is a moron, right? He is a dumb person, but his empathy, his, his ability to in tune what the people around him are looking for and desiring, it, that is so high and he uses that to do his best by them consistently. 
And I, I think that's why he's such a strong protagonist is he really does try and provide for each of his friends and crewmates in the way that he thinks that they need him to. And he waits for them at times to tell him what they need, which is a really healthy masculine thing, um, rather than just assuming and doing what you think they need. L Luffy is like a really weirdly awesome symbol of healthy masculinity. <laughs> and and I just love that about him. I, I, love, I loved that. Uh, I, I love that a lot. Uh, wow. Great episode. Let's uh, move on to 44. Let's, let's get out of our long park and on to the grand, a grand line? I, I have no idea what comes next. So, I... <laughs> the fucking snails. Snap! One piece! Sly! <laughs> yeah! That was actually not a lot of, um... Preamble. We're getting into it quickly this episode. I like it. Oh my god, is that an anime beach episode? I've heard of the fabled anime beach episodes. <laughs> He's turning into a fish man. Did he just swallow that plate? God, Luffy's insides must be as tough as his outsides. <laughs> These two. あそこにおるだろうって。あ。ああ、わあ。いや、オフコース。止めないね。もちろん。もし止めたとしても、あんたら言うこと聞くの?何を言うんさ。お前らは間違いなく。だから思い通り生きろ。<laughs> <laughs> 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 Hmm. I love the relationship between the two of them and Gensan. It's delightful. And he's a great stepdad. Sleep a few days, you know? Usopp support song. <laughs> You dumb tattoo punk girl. No, Jiko, you're the fucking best. No, Doctor. I love that this guy is the doctor slash tattoo artist of the town. I mean, for good with needles, right? <laughs> is he food drunk? <laughs> My deepest conveniences. Gensan, you dirty dog. Oh, maybe Sanjay does have game. I thought it was all just like a bad front. I didn't realize he could like actually get like a little bit of a cuddle there i mean in this case he's literally like a war hero to these people but i love that they've animated her hair in this scene as if she like finally shampooed after a very long time of not having it clean <laughs> あいつらはとても気持ちのいい奴らだし。うん。だからこそ、私は今度は自分のために改造を書いていこうと思ってる。いや、you are Nami。いや、you are。もう行くね。That was really beautifully done. That was like 
really, really fucking well done. I love this fucking show. <laughs> I got goosebumps. Oh man. <laughs> you can't send it me and Nami are all lovey dovey. Does Nami know about that? Fucking Sanji. She doesn't want a long goodbye. <laughs> so she's literally sprinting past it. Is she not gonna show Belmer her new tattoo though? Or uh, Nojiko? I love this. This is one way to avoid the thank you you don't want to hear because it will make you cry. See? Luffy is healthy masculinity embodied in a lull, insane song out of This is like the craziest game of tag you've ever seen. <laughs> In that skirt, she definitely just flashed the whole village. Now, I mean, if you're gonna be jumping around like that, we, we need to get shorts. Like, may, maybe it's a skirt. You know what I mean? Maybe there are, you know. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> That was great. I thought she was playing up her shirt to show the new tattoo. Come back anytime! Take care of yourself! Yes, Dad. He wore the pinwheel to make Nami laugh. Ah! No, oh God! <laughs> what a very, very sweet way to end that. Wow. Good shit. I love that. I, I love that they managed to make the takeoff fun and not just be sad. This arc has been very sad. It's been very emotional. And I think the decision to have Nami's arc, because there's been a lot of emotional goodbyes, right, throughout the show so far at the end of each of these arcs, taking the end of Nami's arc and instead of having it be as emotional as the stuff before it, and obviously that last bit was very emotional and very sweet, but to have it be more of the like jokey tone of the rest of the non-emotional show is is so smart. Um, this this arc has been very heavy, and I think that Oda knew that, and so he he flips the ending on its head a little bit and allows it to be this more uplifting and less like tearful goodbye by taking out the like saying goodbye to everyone and all the thanks and all the things that Nami doesn't want to hear because you know she. She's just not that kind of person. She doesn't want to bask in it. You know, she didn't do it for praise. And I love that about her. And I, I just think it was a really smart choice. I, I think that the way that this episode handled this goodbye is just, is impeccable. Um, boy, boy, Luffy can eat. God damn. Uh, Usopp does want to make it about himself. <laughs> Usopp would want to thank you from every single person in that town. Uh, but yeah, Nami, man, what a character, what an arc, what an incredible, just an incredible freaking bit of storytelling that I, I'm so blown away by, right? Like, I loved this so much, experiencing it and the writing of it. It's tight and it's very interpersonal and like, it's deeply built in relationships, right? 
and the way it plays with flashback and present to tell the story of these three women and this, you know, this man in town who loved them is so effective. And, you know, we talked during the Crow stuff that Luffy is a character who believes in friendship as being the path to victory for him, right? Like, he treats the people who are under him, under his captaincy, very well and like friends because he believes in them and he wants... His ideal is that if he treats them well and if he's friends with them, they will perform better and and they will accomplish more together than they would if it was like a top-down kind of pyramid system. And we get the, like, ideology of that from Luffy. We we get the, the thought process of that and we see that combat the thought process of Kuro. But this arc for Luffy is showing us the actual actions and... It, rather than telling us, rather than having Luffy say to the audience what he believes and how he wants to be, we really got to see it in practice. There was a lot less explicit dialogue about what Luffy's like intentions are for the way he's going to treat his crew. And there was a very intense magnifying glass put on, this is the way in which he's going to do that, right? This is how he's going to accomplish being a better captain than the other captains we see on the show. This is how he's going to about this is how he's going to go about doing right by people. And I think that that is impeccable across this arc. And between telling that story for Luffy and telling the incredible, deep, and beautiful emotional story that we got for Nami, I, I just think that this arc was perfection from top to bottom. Like, it really it really is. It's It's so, so well done. And I'm... I'm, like, kind of blown away. I wish I could watch it again not knowing it was coming. Like, right now. I wish I could wipe my memories and sit here and just watch those episodes again not knowing that those hits were coming. Because they moved me. They, they, they really did, right? They, they got to a, a core bit of me. And based on the popularity of the show and the way people talk about these episodes, I think they did that for a lot of people. And this feels like one of those stories that is this arc in particular is so well done that it just seems to resonate with the people who watch it and what what a gift to have created something like that right like i i I can't imagine the pride oda must feel knowing the way in which he has impacted lives with this tale and what, what what a gift um, and it's so funny. It's so funny because I started the show being like, I like watching One Piece because it's light and fluffy and it just makes me happy, right? And and I said that for a few arcs. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's not the deepest show in the world, but it's totally consistent. The characters rock. And I'm always having fun when I'm watching it. And I can't say that I was always having fun in our long park, right? Because the show flipped itself on its head. It went, hey, you care about these people? their lives are traumatic. Do you care about their trauma? And I realized, yeah, I do. I really do. And that is, that's magical storytelling. And and it was still funny. And it was still ridiculous. And that stuff still worked. And I, I've never seen any piece of media in any storytelling world thread the needle of this goofball over-the-top comedy with the depths of the emotion in this and have it blend so well. I, I, I Nothing has ever, nothing has ever gone right through the, the hole of that needle, right? In the way that I think One Piece does it. And that to me is remarkable. Like really, really remarkable. And it was a gift. And there's a thousand and forty more gifts ahead of me. You know what I mean? And and I think that that is kind of the magic of this world. I just want to live in this world. Even though I don't want to live in this world because this world is a nightmare. I, I want to experience this world. Because while it is so emotionally draining sometimes, it is so comforting because it is so tight narratively. And I'm just so glad I started watching this. I, I love this show. I love it a lot. Um, clearly I am, I've started to buy the merch. Uh, who knows? Maybe one day I'll just become a pirate. I'll just be inspired by an anime to become a pirate on the open seas myself. Uh, Arlong, I am so glad I got to watch your nose get broken. That brought me joy. 
Uh, I don't think he's dead, but if he was, uh, I'm okay with that because fuck that guy. Uh, fuck him in his stupid face and his stupid laugh and all the shit he put Belmare, Nami, and Nojiko through. And everybody else, obviously, but those three in particular. Um, I'm, I'm kind of sad Nojiko's not going to be on the team because I love Nojiko. She's great. I love Gensan. I wouldn't want Gensan on the team. I don't know that they need, like, dad energy, but Nojiko, Nojiko would be a great addition. I have a feeling she raises that boy. They don't explicitly say it, but I think she rages that bo- raises that boy. I think she does. Uh, all right. I think that's all I got to say. I loved it, clearly. Uh, come back on Thursday. We're going to start whatever the next arc is, and we're going to find out if Luffy ever finds that raw honey, ha- uh, raw honey, honeydew melon. I don't know. Uh, If you (laughs) like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't hit the dislike button, leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her this episode that algorithm goddess is Nami. Obviously. How could it not be Nami for this one? God, that scene with her and Belmare. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Before we go. The scene in the house where she talks to Belmare and I'm so glad Belmare says nothing. There's no dialogue. And then Belmer disappears. And then she turns to leave. And she just feels Belmer give her a shove out the door. And whether it was real or not, maybe she tripped. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? That was beautiful. That moment, that moment was fucking beautiful. And I loved it. I, and perfect. She doesn't talk. It's just this moment of... (sighs) Incredible. If you want to follow me on the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. Do something nerdy tonight, y'all.